This video looks at another lean concept, and one that also is really very practical, and it's called 5S. It is called 5S because it's a collection of five words that begin with S in Japanese that have been transliterated into English, and some words are a bit of a better fit than others. 5S was first used in manufacturing, but it's since shown its value in lots of other industries, including healthcare. And the basic idea is that you can get more done by having a workplace that is simple to navigate, predictable, and where your role and your job in it is clear. If you're working in a chaotic environment with no order, that leads to lots of wasted time and added stress hunting for things, and it can feel like you're fighting the system just to get things done. There's a bit more to this than it being the work equivalent of having your dad tell you to go and tidy up your bedroom, but certainly some bits of it can feel similar. It really does work though, and we're going to look through each of the five S's. Now, one of the main pillars of the Toyota production system is around respect for humanity, and with this in mind, I'm not going to say the words in Japanese because otherwise I'd just be torturing a beautiful language. So, the first S is Siri which also means to sort. Now this is some of the basic housekeeping in the workplace. Nobody wants to work in a pigsty, and we all know of those parts in our offices or our team rooms or store cupboards that are completely full of junk. They're full of unnecessary items. And the sorting part of 5S involves finally getting around to chucking all of that out. And often we keep things just in case, or because we don't know whether we're allowed to throw them out. And I know that working in the NHS, it can seem like a real shame to throw things away that have probably never really been used. But there's no point in throwing good money after bad, and keeping something forever just adds to the cost. If we've got too much of something, or we've got the wrong things, we need to address that, rather than just finding a space for things that we don't need. It's the only way that we'll prevent the same thing from happening again in the future. We did this in one of the treatment rooms in my department, and a succession of consultants had left behind different bits of medical equipment that we didn't need anymore. And we found defibrillators, ECG machines, temperature probes, loads of nursing supplies, and it was about £3,000 worth in total, and we sent them to different bits of the trust that actually needed them. We needed lots of bin bags for the rubbish that had to go out, and in exchange we ended up with an extra room in the department. And you can do it on a small level. We all have drawers that are completely full of biros that don't work anymore, mouse mats, old pages, those leather cases that laptops came in that seem too nice to throw away but we never use and we're not sure we're allowed to chuck them out. Actually, as an aside, I checked with Richard from IT. He says it's fine to throw them out. And if you're not sure, one of the approaches that 5S uses is to put a tag on it and put it to one side. And if you haven't used the item for six or eight weeks, then stick it in the bin or get someone to do it for you. By sorting things out, it makes it quicker and easier to find the things that we actually need. It makes it easier to spot if you're running low on supplies, and it gets away from the costs of heating and cleaning and maintaining a space that is just holding junk. The second S is Seton, which has been translated as systematic arrangement or setting in order, and it basically just means being ordered, being ready and prepared for the work that you need to do. By way of a demonstration of how a systematically arranged workplace makes work more efficient, we're going to do a little test. I'm going to show you a picture, and I'd like you to tell me how many bricks there are, how many different colour bricks there are, and whether any are missing. You've got two seconds. It's not that easy to tell. Now if we were to systematically arrange the workplace, and I get you to do the same task, so I want you to tell me how many colours of bricks there are, how many bricks there are, and whether any are missing. Let's do it again. I would hope that you found the second one easier. It's easier to spot that one of the blocks is missing. And systematic arrangement applies not only to how you arrange your office, but it can equally apply to how you arrange information on a computer system, or other elements of your work. This is about having a sensible order to the workplace, to make getting the job done easier. And ideally, your workplace should help that your work flow smoothly and easily. And this means having those items that you use regularly near to hand, whereas the items that you use infrequently, you keep available, but not cluttering up your immediate workspace. For me, this meant setting up the clinic room in Tiverton, so that I could put down my laptop and immediately connect my printer and my scanner and my mouse, without having to go hunting for the cables or for the USB ports. The time saving from this was tiny, and I would guess probably only about a minute a day. But a minute a day 
times by 250 working days gives you a number of hours of saved time by one small change. So you just have to think long term. So, set in order involves creating a place for things to go. Everything has a place and everything goes in its place, and you need good signs as to what goes where. And that's a way of making sure that things flow through the department and that you don't waste time hunting for things. The third S is SESO, which translates as shine or spick and span. Now this relates to keeping the workplace completely clean. This originally came from car factories where oil and dirt used to be the norm, but modern car production factories are incredibly clean. And in healthcare this can translate in, in many different ways. Now the messages around hygiene and hospital are pretty clear. But we all have areas of our desks or our offices which house all sorts of nasties and we tend not to show it to other people. A good example of CSO is around taking good care of uh, hygiene, especially in the shared areas. It's disrespectful to give your colleague gastroenteritis because you haven't taken responsibility to manage yourself. I personally have observed more than one consultant psychiatrist not wash their hands after going for a pee. Is it any wonder that his hands were yellow? and you think twice about accepting a cup of tea from them again or shaking their hand. Now when we're working, keeping your workspace clean is important, partly because it gives you a chance to look at the areas that you don't normally see. Now sometimes you get something good, you find a stray pound coin, but often it can be something more important, like a lost post-it note about a patient that you really needed to do something about, but it fell down the back of a desk. A clean workspace makes it easier to identify when more serious things are starting to go wrong. They're much less likely to be hidden. One of the things that a clean work environment does is it gives the message to patients and their families that they're entrusting their lives to an organisation that values cleanliness. The fourth S is Saiketsu, which translates to standardisation. And this is the idea that we should all set standards in our work and that the best practice should then go on and become the standard. And we all know that DPT faces big challenges. We've got a big geographical area with bases that are quite remote from each other and it can make standardising good practice a real challenge. It's important to realise that setting standards doesn't mean turning workers into robots. For example, the standards that you might set for a first patient assessment might be things like every patient will have a risk assessment or we'll offer psychological therapies to every patient on a depression pathway. And in that way, the smart integrated care pathways set standards for care. And for too long we've known that care coordinators have not known where their role begins and ends, and that's led to quite a lot of variation in practice across DPT. And by spelling out exactly what's required, that makes everybody's job clearer. The idea of standardising work doesn't mean that it is set in stone forever. Whenever somebody comes up with a better way of doing things, whether that's quicker or better quality, then you can test that to see if it really is an improvement, and if it proves to be better, then the standard work should change and everyone should work to that higher standard. It's a way of continuously improving. The final S is Stuka, which translates as sustain. In the past, this has also been a real challenge. You can get good initiatives that show really clear improvements in practice, and you do the audit and the graphs all look better, you get the pat on the back, and then you go back handful of months later and everything has returned to normal. It's incredibly hard to maintain improved practice. Now to a degree this is because people require training on a new process and it's a bit unfashionable to talk about it but it also requires discipline. It requires self-discipline but also discipline at a team and at a trust level. And the sustain part of 5S is managed through the routine use of audit, whether that's clinical audit or non-clinical audit, to make sure that we're maintaining our standards. Those standards can be about anything. It can be about clinical matters, such as whether we're asking patients whether they're depressed or not. It can be about non-clinical matters, like the amount of time it takes for typing to be done. And if our standards are slipping, we need to understand why and to address it. As far as lean goes, we'd only really say that a process has become reliable when it's achieved about 95% of the time. So you set the bar fairly high. The other element of sustain within 5S is about keeping things in working order, whether that's machines or people. If you push a machine too hard and you don't maintain it, and you ignore it when it's starting to show signs of strain, then it'll break down, and overall you'll be less efficient, you'll have to stop work, and the same is true of people. If you push people too hard for too long, without adequate support and ignore the signs of strain, then people break down too. 
The lean system, the Toyota system, stresses the importance of working like the tortoise rather than the hare, and that means that there's a real long-term benefit to a working day that is consistent, predictable, and manageable. In terms of doing 5S, one of the best ways to do it is just to get on and do it, and I'd encourage anyone who's watched this video to give it a try. The changes don't have to be big. Changes can be incredibly small, and often the very small changes work well. 5S is a great system in that there's no particular training that you necessarily need to go on to be able to get started with it. It also gives you a good framework, so if you're not sure where to improve, improving one of the 5S's is going to lead to some sort of beneficial result. So I'd really encourage people just to get stuck in and to see what happens when you start making these small changes in your own workplace.